What's going on guys, it's Darren here with TNT and welcome to the channel. So today we have an install for you of the Terraflex bed rail system on the Jeep Gladiator. So on top of that, awesome little bed rail install so we can get our bed rack hopefully whenever it comes in. We're still teasing you a little bit on our Instagram page with that. Uh, not quite sure when it's going to get here, but whenever it does, you guys will be surprised. So on our Instagram also, we hosted a little competition between uh, a couple of the other Jeeps that we have on what you want to see on our YouTube video. So it was between my wife's 2017 JKU and the uh, 1999 Jeep Cherokee sitting right behind me and the Cherokee won. So we're going to go over the Cherokee. We're going to talk about uh, what we're going to do in it in the near future. Um, we have a few upgrades for it and a few maintenance issues that we need to take care of. Nothing major. It runs. It's fun. So we just got to get it up into peak condition. So stay tuned, hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you in a minute. guys so we got it all unpackaged so in the package it does come with one two and three of the bed rails one for each side and one for the back of the truck bed and then it also comes with these um, d-rings that go into the slotted system um, it's a locking system so you can twist lock it um, the, the cool thing that I really like a bit about these compared to the Mopar is that these are um, actually aluminum instead of plastic so that's a really cool feature that I like. It gives it a little bit more uh, durability and sturdiness whenever you're going to tie things down inside the truck bed. All right, guys, so we got our tools all laid out, and it's very simple tools. So what you're going to need to install this, based on the instructions, is a number three Allen key hex head. You're also going to need a ratchet, um, an extension, and a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, now with that you can install everything now you can use an impact which you're gonna see us probably try just to see if it works now be careful with the impact because there are pre threaded um, holes already for the screws to mount this and I want you to strip any of those just like we don't want to either because then you're gonna have to go up a size um, and it's just not worth it so be careful if you use an impact um, definitely get it started by hand or with the ratchet if you can um, before going any further so this should be a pretty quick install. Um, like I said, we're doing this for you guys because not every truck comes with the bed rail system, kind of like ours. Now, one thing you're gonna see a struggle with a little bit is you see the bed liner that's already there. Um, I've seen a lot that some of the bed liner holes um, are kind of, some of the pre-drilled holes, excuse me, are already filled with bed liner. Uh, we're gonna try to see if that's a problem for us and figure out some ways to work around that if we can. So let's get to installing this. The first step on the install instructions is to install um, caps on each one of the ends of the rails. Um, you're going to need the thread locker that does come with it, as well as the small hex screws um, that are also with the package. And you're going to need your number three Allen key. This fits in there nice and snug so you're not going to strip it. And then tighten them all down. So Let's get to doing all six of these. Once all the end caps are put on, all six of them with the six uh, hex bolts, you're good to start lining everything up to where it's going to go in the truck. Now remember, you do have two side rails, which are the longer ones, and one short rail, which is going to be the one that goes in the back. Um, after reading the instructions, it does look like the openings um, for the D-ring mounts and other accessories go towards the back, um, and then the one in the back goes towards the right. So just make sure it's lined up that way. So and also easy train of thought if the holes don't line up 
and it's too far back or too far forward, try flipping it around and sawing it a different way. here one of them is kind of larger um, the other one you can see it's already pre-threaded it's going to go in the pre-threaded hole right there hopefully and it looks like it started to go which is good um, so the bed liner you really didn't get in the way of this one um, kind of makes me a little happy. So it says get, get it kind of loose, uh, don't tighten it too much, and then go to the far side and do that one. So that's what we're gonna do. Go find that hole, make sure it does line up, which it does. two on and then move to the back uh, so with the bed liner you saw me struggle with this one it's like it didn't want to catch for a minute and it finally did just a little bit so with that little bit we were able to just apply more pressure on the back side of the ratchet um, and just put some muscle into it whenever we torque it and it finally started going in so let's get it installed driver's side is done um, and we're going to move over here to the passenger side here in just a second but I want to talk about the difference between the Terraflex system and the Mopar system of the bed rails. So with the Mopar I read online that you have to drill some holes into your bed rail system and uh, insert um, a few things so you actually put um, you drill a hole and then you put a little spacer pretty much in there that already has some pre-threaded holes you use a tool to lock that into the actual metal of the bed and then you have a threaded hole that way. Um, you also use the four holes on each side as well as I think two of those on the Mopar system. Now on the Terraflex system, all you use are four of the pre-drilled holes um, and it's still the same exact quality, same exact strength of the Mopar system um, from everything that I've looked up. Uh, you know, with this, we're gonna be installing a bed rack, so it'll bed rack will sit here, have a down uh, L bracket right here. It'll connect into um, these rails, to give it a little bit more stability onto the bed itself, and lock it down. Um, pretty excited for that, but I just wanted to mention that part about the Mopar system. You know, this is a new uh, truck, and a lot of people are buying these new trucks without these systems and want these systems. But do you want it at the cost of drilling holes into your truck bed? You know, for us, we plan on drilling some holes into our truck bed, which we'll talk about that here in just a little bit um, in the video. Uh, but for most people, you don't, you don't really want to. I mean, who really wants to drill holes into a brand new truck?
Now with both sides all done, we're gonna move to the back piece, be good to go, and done from there with the install. All right guys, so one thing that I ran into is that this right here is a little too thick, so I'm gonna have to grab a Dremel, Dremel some of that out, um, which I'm talking about uh, the bed liner, the spray-in bed liner. So with it being too thick and around that bolt, um, I cannot get the screw in and it's not seating right. Now I really don't want to strip the screw or the bed itself, so we're gonna do that. Okay, so I got a little Dremel with a metal tip. Um, it's gonna go around the edge. That bolt right there. Um, just try it. open the hole up a little bit more so that screw will fit right in now. I think I'm gonna have to do it. Right, I think that one's pretty seated in there now. So sure. So now with all three rails installed, it's gonna be pretty simple. Um, just grab your little D-carabiner, uh, loosen it up, find the opening towards the back, slide it forward to where you want it, and you're good to lock it wherever you do want that. Um, we're gonna do two on each side for now. One towards the front, one towards the back. Same as on the or passenger side, excuse me and then we'll be good to go. So with the bed rails installed, we do have a few things that I wanna go ahead and throw on it, such as the water port shower system, or spray system that we do have, um, as well as a couple of the quick fists. And most of those are gonna be installed by these little brackets right here. Um, this little hardware came off of Amazon. I think it was $12 for four of them, so about $3 a piece. Um, it mounts the same way that the quick, that the, I'm sorry, the D-rings do. You go back to the opening, slide it in, and then your bolt goes through. Uh, we'll show you more in detail about that uh, here in just a little bit. I like to do this, I like to go ahead and prep it as uh, get the mounting hardware on the back with the screws nice and loose on the front. Uh, so now with this, you're gonna need uh, some Allen keys. No big deal. Um, just make sure you get the one that fits right. You wanna be able to get it snug in there where it will not strip out the inside of the actual bolt itself. So let's go ahead and head to the back of the truck, get this slid in, we'll get it tightened down, and then this will go right on. So once you get it slid into place, it's as simple as grabbing your Allen key, locking it on there, and then just tightening it up. So the cool thing is, uh, since that's already locked in there, um, in the channel itself, uh, it, it's gonna just twist on its own freely, um, which is nice because it'll straighten back up whenever it needs to. Um, just don't over tighten it to strip out the plastic or the metal behind it. And be careful of doing that so you don't strip out the head of the actual bolt itself. Uh, make sure you're fully seated in there, just nice and snug. That slides just like that. Put a lock on the back, it's good to go. So we ended up moving the water port from the back to the passenger rear. And I'll tell you about that whenever we talk about um, the fridge slide here in just a minute and why we decided to do that. So I wanna talk about this water port real quick. So this water port is a three gallon, um, water system uh, it's got a little hand pump here or you can also on the back there's a nozzle that you can hook up a compressor 
and uh, pressurize this. So whenever um, you get your water poured, it does come with a couple options. You get a handheld sprayer, which can attach um, to this side is where we're gonna end up putting it. Um, and it also comes with a decent little hose um, so you can shower, wash some dishes off, um, just whatever you need, really. It's pretty nifty just to be able to take that and just hook it up. Um, it, that's all it is to it. You just press it and it hooks right in. Um, whenever you're not using it, it'll sit right about there and you're good to go. Uh, so like I said, all this is going into play as to why and how um, we're setting everything up is for our bed rack and we're trying to make it as easy as possible for us while we're at camp. Uh, hopefully that should be explained here in the next couple weeks whenever our bed rack does get here and we can go ahead and get that video filmed. Um, so on the back side you just turn your water on and it does pressurize the hose at which point you can turn it on to shower mode whatever you wish. It's got a good actual pressure coming out of it um, enough to spray you know about that much I'd be good to put some soap on put some shampoo in my hair and then maybe pressurize it just a little bit more it's not very hard in the morning that might be annoying to some of your you know co-campers next to you so be wary of that but you know at night after a long hot day it's 97 degrees right now I'd love to just spray off right now but now I'm good to spray and you can sit there put it on jet mode to get some conditioner out of uh, your hair whatever you need and it's just like a normal garden sprayer so it does last just like that um, if you're hot and you need to mist off it's got the misting feature as well so that'd be nice for a, just a little bit of a mist uh, and we really like it um, we debated on like the rain shower um, or the shower tube and everything and this was the best option for us and this is what we decided to go with these right here are called quick fists um, they're easy to put like a shovel or an axe inside lock it down and then you're good to go um, these mount the exact same way that the water port does um, using that hardware that i talked about that you get off amazon twelve dollars for four of them it's not a bad deal um, the metal ones came from amazon the plastic ones came with the water port itself so they slide right in and you twist the water port until it's tight I'm sorry, you twist the quick fist until it's tight. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a hex head that fits these. It's a little bit larger in size. And then secure those down just a little bit more. Um, now with that, it just helps uh, lock it down and make sure your tools don't go flying all over the place. as you're driving down the road. So once again, it would be hatchet, anything, lock it in there whenever you need it. It's an ease of use, so you just grab it and do this. Now, you gotta be careful with people with sticky fingers with this. Um, leave it in a parking lot. Uh, these are kind of tools that you use only when going on the trail. Don't leave it always on there. So that's why we're just gonna go ahead and throw a couple of them on and then uh, leave them blank. So in the next couple of videos, you'll just see them blank. So talking about the bed of the truck and while we're setting it up this way, we decided, hey, um, we had the fridge in the back seat of the Tacoma. That took up all of our back seat. Let's try to move that to the bed. Um, it gives us more room if somebody wants to ride. But we're thinking about putting the fridge slide right about here. Um, so it's right at our uh, cooking area. It should be easy to access uh, whenever we need to. And then whenever we're done at camp, we just slide it back. It's locked in and the fridge is good. Now with that, we would have to install some kind of plug system back here in the back so that we could uh, power the fridge all the time, which is not a big issue. We're gonna look into that and hopefully get that sorted out here in the next few weeks. And we'll walk you along that process as well. Um, this is just the ARB uh, 52 to 64 quart fridge slide. So um, it's just their simple one. Uh, the bed's pretty much set up uh, as much as we can today. I hope that you liked this video. It was a great install on the TerraFlex bed rail system. Um, the mounting D-rings, uh, the quick fists. It was a quick overview of our water port uh, shower system and just what we plan on doing with the um, fridge slide right here instead of having it in the back of the truck. 
If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Help us out. If you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button and come on our adventures with us. We would love to have you be a part of our family, and we always call it we're an overlanding family. So Morgan and I are about to go film the video on the 1999 Jeep Cherokee. Stay tuned for it coming in a few days, and we'll see you on the trail. See you guys.